Hey coaches, I figured we'd do this, then sit there and have another meeting. I just wanted to talk about a few things, and then if you have any questions, you can respond uh, via the emails that we sent out. Um, first of all, physicals. Uh, Cheryl should be sending that list out sometime this week. Make sure every one of your athletes has a physical. This is incredible. Once again, I said I'd try and have an email reminder sent out to all parents, reminding them that they need to have these physicals before trials. But if it's not done, it's not done. Um, don't let them try out. Uh, tryouts. Remember a couple things about tryouts. They need you need to have a three day tryout at least. Um, that is per code. And then you need to talk to the kids afterwards. There's no list posting. I would recommend having a uh, assistant with you to talk to the kids. And you don't have to be long. Just be very brief. Thank you for trying out. Give them some things to work on, some things to improve on. Be specific with issues, but I wouldn't get number specific. Um, that tends to get you in trouble with parents. Uh, say stuff like, you know, if your footwork is not where it needs to be at this level, uh, your skill set for a varsity team, or your court awareness, that, those type of phrases. Uh, I know I got in trouble years ago using numbers, and don't tell a kid for the most part that you see them as number 15 and a team is 16. Uh, Tell them, you know what, they need some work to do, but don't tell them you're stuck. Give them an, an incentive to work and to improve. Um, and once your teams are made, we need rosters ASAP. We need this for a lot of reasons. Uh, we need them because uh, we send out information to these people, so we need to know how, who's on your team. Uh, you are already having contests before school even starts, so like the first two days, we got your kids out of school early. Teachers need to know who these people are. Email those lists to me and Cheryl ASAP. Uh, I don't even care if you don't have numbers on your rosters yet for uniforms. That doesn't bother me. I'll need that by the, in a week or two, but for sure I need your kids' names. I'll be sending out emails to the parents regarding it. I need to know who those kids are. A um, couple things in the handbook. I told you an email the other day to send out um, or that you need to look at the Metro and Ileana Christian uh, handbooks. They're online on our website. Um, I'll put a link on this video and I'm actually going to come up. i got to add it later. Uh, but look at those things. I think sometimes we assume that we know what's in them and I don't think you always do. I will hit a couple of highlights. Um, so you also need to look at the Metro Handbook to rem be reminded of what um, policy changes have occurred. Remember for girls you are all varsity and JV and there's a third level. It's freshmen. Uh, boys, that has not changed this year. We talked about a little bit for golf maybe. And tennis as of this point it has not it might for boys tennis but for golf in the fall it is varsity and frost off for every other boys sport in the fall so that has not changed um, a couple things in the athletic code remember um, to remind the kids that we don't just have a code because we want to have a code say we want to hold our athletes to Christian character and that's what we want to emphasize we always talk about the drinking and the smoking and the drugs and it remind them that they, they obviously can't do that and they can't be at parties when they do that and if they're at a party they need to leave immediately and they should call you and told, tell you that uh, they left immediately and just so that there's no surprises we want to hear about it Monday morning when some parent gets to it um, but go over that with them but remind them that yeah Christian character is important and that's what we want to hold them to it's not just drinking and smoking it's how you hold yourself in the hallways, in the classroom, and all that kind of stuff. So emphasize Christian character. That's what we're teaching. And that's why we do athletics, is to teach them about God through a different avenue. But yeah, the athletic code, a good reminder to all of us, especially freshmen. In season is all we, it's not that we don't care about the other part, that's all we enforce. So once tryouts start, they're on code. They don't have to sign anything, they're just on code, and they're on code until the varsity season ends. And remind them of that if you're at a party you're, you're, you're as guilty if you didn't do anything or not. If you're at a party and you, and you see alcohol or smoking or drugs, you can leave me. We had some problems last year with smoking. Alright, remind them that it is, a, it is a full year. It's a one and done policy. It's not a full year. It's a full season. It's a one and done policy. If you're caught smoking I don't care if it's the second game or the last game you got or the drinking or drugs or anything like that. A um, couple reminder of some newer policies we had last year. One was playing athletes for postseason. Um, they cannot 
if you pull an athlete up just for postseason. Now, they haven't played in the varsity team at all, all year, but it's postseason, a lot of people would take people up for experience and that kind of stuff. They cannot play in front of people who've been on your roster all year, unless there's injury or unless you have athletic director permission. It just causes too many problems, I just don't think it's right. However, you can pull them up a week or two beforehand, and then that rule doesn't apply. They just need to have played or been on the roster for a certain amount of time, and you need to you need to let me or Deb know before you do that. Anyway, you can't pull anybody off without, without our permission at all. That's in our policy. You can't put a freshman on the varsity team without talking to us first. So that happens at the beginning of the season before you make cuts. That's anywhere during the season that needs to be approved by us. Um, heat policy. This is very important, especially in the fall. Um, anytime when heat indexes are above 100 degrees and temperature is scheduled to be 95 or 100. Um, then it falls under our lap of what we want to do. Uh, we might give you the priority to cancel practice, we might have extra hydration out, we might cancel games. Um, hydrate your athletes. Uh, it is huge nowadays. I mean, the IHSA sent out something, I think Deb may have even emailed it to all of you. Uh, when we get in trouble, um, give lots of water breaks. Shorter practices are probably better. Uh, in games, especially when you're looking in August and early September, we have those hot days. And a lot of our kids have been sitting in a hot building all day long. Um, so go easy on them. But if it gets to 95 degrees or 100 degree heat mixes, we take over. We might cancel all practices. Uh, we might cancel games. Uh, we schedule. Uh, but that's start when our heat policy takes effect on those lists. The other thing I said uh, around with email lists, make sure you get all your rosters to me. I send out emails. I do a lot more in the spring than in the fall. I did a little bit in the fall last year and in the winter, usually when I made mistakes. Um, but we'll be doing that as well. Uh, get them to us. Also, remind our athletes about social media. Uh, this became an issue last year a number of times through the videos that they posted and stuff like that. Um, we see that. We'll find out about it. We get emailed to us. Have them be careful what they post on Twitter, what they put on their Facebook and Instagram pages and MySpace pages or YouTube, what they're throwing up there. Um, just have them be careful because they are being watched. Um, I already mentioned the female sports um, forms. All the forms, they're on the website. There's three main ones we need to do. Drug policy, uh, the care to minors policy, and that's the one you, if you're on the road and you need to have medical care to one of your athletes and the parent's not there, that gives you permission to do that. And the concussion policy. There's three of them. Uh, pull them offline, make your athletes sign them, return them all to Melissa. She said she would collect them for us. Um, they all go to Melissa and then she will divvy them up where they need to go. Because sometimes last year we got confused who was going where, what was going where. It was confusing. Um, at this point, just send them all to Melissa and we will get them where they need to be. Because the, the, uh, the immediate care, you keep a copy of it. Melissa needs a copy of it because the athletic code form. The drug policy, we keep. Concussion, Melissa needs. So just give them all to Melissa. Uh, but each athlete gets one. Those need to be signed in the first week or two as well. A good time to do that is at your preseason meetings. Remember, you need, as a coach, as a program, you need to have preseason meetings or send a booklet home of some sort. Let me know when you're having your meeting or give me a copy of your booklet. I want to make sure that you're doing that. That is a great way to start communicating with parents. I recommend you email in parents often. I just keep them in the loop. I have not found that. I find that invaluable. No parents ever complained to me about too many emails when it comes to athletics. I know, too many emails from other families, but not that. They feel like their kids do not explain things well. It's a great way to get your information to the athlete's parents because when it goes through the athlete to the parents, who knows what happens to them. So uh, I highly recommend you do that. Um, I'm going to be sending you and putting stuff in your boxes, and if you, some of our new coaches, you will have boxes, or there'll be program boxes in the office with your name on it or the sport on it. I'll be putting stuff regarding our our website. Now, Athletics 2000 has changed. It was bought out by 8 to 18, so it looks different. So there'll be some new, new passwords, some new ways of doing things, but we want you to keep up your specific site on the web, so whether it's your sport, to update things like 
put a roster on there, um, update scores, because people look at that. Parents look at that. Some of you did a great job of that last year. Some of you did not do a very good job of that. Um, I, I want the varsity coaches to do it. I am not as concerned with the Frost Soft coaches do it, although their parents look too. And when you don't do it, they don't like that. I get complaints about that a lot. I am trying to get someone to do all of that for all my coaches. I have not been successful at doing that yet. Um, but I'll put sheets in your box which explain that. It's a little different process. It goes step by step on how to do that stuff with new passwords and new codes for that. Your IHSA passwords are new too, and it's a new system this year. And if I, I think I have it right where each coach is going to get their own individual password emailed them by the state. Because what Deb has been doing is went into the website and has pretty much had to write down all the coaches, their email addresses in the state database. And then the state sends each individual coach a new password. So you should be getting those soon. And when you get those, then you can watch um, the rules meetings. So for varsity coaches, you need to watch rule meetings. So. That's you, Tim, that's Jack, that's Rob, that's Jim, and Deb, and uh, who am I really forgetting? Nikki. You guys have to watch those real meetings. And make sure it gets not frost off. You don't have to worry about that JV, you don't fresh when you don't. Um, do that sooner rather than later, as soon as those passwords get to you. Um, you'll also have in your box in the next couple days, Cheryl's going to be working on it soon, is a transportation schedule. Um, I make that, I set up, Cheryl assigns the buses, so once it's made and out there, um, if it's an issue with which bus you get and all that kind of stuff, you get all that information goes to Cheryl. Um, if it's an issue with time leaving, uh, then talk to me, because I'm the one to get you out of class. When I say departure on there, if it says that, that's when the bus is scheduled to leave. So. Talk to me about when you get your kids out of class. You just can't pull them out of class. That needs to go through me and AJ. Um, and uh, we get, we've got a lot more grief the last few years about getting kids out. So we're, we're gonna fight that a little bit. So I know some of our places are longer. I know you probably like to have a little more time. Um, we'll do the best we can in that, but that goes through me. If you have any questions, as, as you get that schedule, probably uh, might have to be next week. Um, let me know if you see glaring problems with what transportation you have and or what time you're leaving. And I can change that. But look at that. But if there's any problems with like, you're gonna get your buses, uh, your mini bus of keys from Cheryl on a daily basis, go through that. Uh, the yellow bus will be taking her through Cheryl as well. So once the schedule's out there, unless you need to change a time or something, everything goes to Cheryl. Um, make sure AJ has uh, people who check those mini buses on a daily basis in the morning. So if it's messy, uh, you'll get an email from AJ. And if you get two of them, then we'll start kind of hounding them. But we need to keep those buses neat and clean. Um, they're getting higher in mileage. So uh, we got a lot of complaints about driving last year from parents. I got a couple phone calls and stuff like that. A couple things. One, keep the speed limit acceptable. Um, what I mean by that, we, we shouldn't be going 75 miles an hour, all right? The speed limit's 55, be safe, you're traveling with kids. I, believe me, I'm, I know I'm, I feel hypocritically in saying this because I know I drive fast, um, but Peter mentioned this last year, we need to slow it down a little bit. I'm not saying go 55, I'm saying don't go 75. Also, make sure your kids are not yelling and doing stuff out the window. Um, we got in trouble for that last year too. Remember, our name is on those buses. More importantly, Jesus' name is on those buses. So let's do a better job of uh, driving. But if you need more time to drive, let me know. I, I can probably get you a little more time to leave early so you're not driving 75. Um, what else we got to do? Oh, make sure when I send you, or Deb sends you um, the results Remember, we get those emails from RB. They're the caretaker of the league when it comes to, they keep track of all the results for the conference. So you need to fill out those sheets and send them back. Last year, we were the worst school in the conference. A lot of other people have the same questions. Um, and hopefully you have a uh, great fall. Let me know how I can help or Deb can help in any way.